Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is Mr. Brusco, and we're going to be um, going over some scratch tutorials. So this activity I like to do to teach movement commands and also repeat loops. And this gets students familiar with how to make a variety of different movements with a variety of different um, sprites. So we're going to begin by creating a new project. Um, this is going to be an underwater scene. So we're going to pick our background up here. Uh, and we are going to go for an underwater scene right down here. And this one really works best with this. So, okay, so here we are. Um, obviously cats cannot swim, so we are gonna get rid of our cat, resting our finger on our cat until it shakes, and then get rid of it. And we're gonna add our first underwater creature, and it is going to be a fish. So depending on how what time you have to do this, um, you can allow them to color and change the color of their fish. Um, so I'm gonna start with this green fish. If you wanna change the color, you would go to the paintbrush here and give them time. This could be a bottomless pit. So usually if you might wanna introduce a lesson and give them time to change it later. So let's select our first animal. Okay, so what we're trying to do is create a variety of different movements here and they get more complex with each with each sprite. So for this fish, we're simply gonna do a back and forth swimming movement. So I'm gonna bring in a green flag and then I am going to have this fish swim. Now we're gonna do a repeat loop on this. So there's a few different ways to do repeat loops here. Uh, the, and you can use a variety of ones depending on the students. And this we're gonna use a forever repeat loop. So we're gonna put that at the end. Uh, so here we just wanna make, and I like to bring the grid up here so we can actually see the distances. Um, grid is right up here, in case you guys didn't see it. Okay, so I'm going to have this fish swim 12 forward, and then I'm going to have it do four backwards, and I'm going to have it do a repeat of that forever. Um, so when I hit the green flag, that fish will forever swim back and forth in that repeated manner. Okay, um, now let's stop it, bring it back to the beginning, and we're going to add another fish. And this fish is gonna do a slightly more complex pattern. And we'll use the yellow fish this time. And that yellow fish is going to swim up, forward and back and up and down. So we'll go in and we'll do green flag. And let's do forward nine. And we will do up three and then back four, and then down two, okay. So, and then forever repeat. Now these numbers don't really matter, except we want this to continually move in an upward direction. Um, so you'll see in this case, the, it always gains one square as it moves up. So you might wanna give them the criteria of having this fish gain at least one square as it moves up, okay. Perfect, back to the beginning. Um, now we're gonna add one more sea creature. We are gonna add a seahorse. All right, seahorse, where are you? There you are, okay. Um, so we're gonna bring our seahorse in and our seahorse is going to do a rotation, do a spin. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're gonna bring in a green flag. We're gonna have our seahorse, in fact, we're gonna have it spin and move up and down. So let's do the opposite of the last fish. We're gonna have this fish move, the seahorse go eight forward. We're gonna have it go, let's see, up two, down one, uh, let's see, down one. And then we're gonna have it do the spin. So this is an interesting one. Uh, this is a rotation of 12 to get a full rotation. Um, so three, just like a clock, 12 hours in the clock is a good way to tell your students about it. And then I'm gonna have it do down one and then repeat forever. Okay. And then let's test it out. Okay, and a spin and down and a spin and down. I made one slight error here. I think we did, uh, I should have the back code of one, not down. Okay. All right, and now we're gonna add one more sea creature, and this one's gonna be our starfish, okay? 
And we are going to introduce one more variable for this starfish. Okay. And we're going to put this starfish here, and it's just going to go up and down and spin. Um, the difference with this starfish is we're going to have it spin multiple directions. Okay, so we're going to go here. We're going to have the starfish go up. And let's look at our grid. We want it to go up to maybe 5. So we'll go up 5. And then we're going to rotate, and we can have it do multiple spins. So let's do 24 to the right, and then we're going to have it go down 5, and we're going to have it do 24 to the left, and then repeat forever. And test it out. Spinning starfish, spinning seahorse, and our aquarium is getting quite busy. Okay, we're going to add one more variable to this. Stop and go back, add another one. And this is where we are gonna add our scuba diver. Scuba diver or a whale, let's do the whale first. Okay, um, so the thing about the whale is that the whale, we want it to get bigger or smaller. Obviously it starts very, very large and we want it to kind of disappear in the horizon. So we're gonna start it up there in the corner um, and this is where it gets a little bit trickier. This is a new code. So we're just going to have this whale swim back and forth and get smaller as it goes back and forth. So we're going to have it swim across the screen. Maybe uh, let's do almost the whole screen. Let's do 17. And then we're going to bring this code in. And these are the shrink codes. So we're going to have it shrink by one. And then we're going to have it swim back. Let's do 14. Okay. Um, and you could just stop right there if you wanted to, and it will take it a while to get smaller. Let's do our repeat forever loop. And now let's see what we got here. Whale's well, really big, swimming back and forth. And it just got one smaller, kind of hard to tell. Um, but if we do this long enough, there we go. Now you can kind of tell that our whale is getting quite a bit smaller. If you wanted it to get smaller even faster, we could just add another one of these right here of one. And then it will get smaller faster because it will do it after each turn back and forth. Okay. So last thing we're going to add here is... Our scuba diver. All right. And we'll put our scuba diver on the bottom. Where are you, scuba diver? There you are. Pshh. They can take a picture of their own face and put it in here, but that's kind of an advanced thing. I'll leave that up to you. Um, they have to have their camera on. So we're going to put our, our scuba diver on the bottom here. Okay. And we're going to add everything we learned to this scuba diver. So we are going to make it swim, spin, and shrink. So we're going to go forward. Let's do 18. And then we'll have it go up. So we're going to do everything that we've learned. Up three. Shrink by one. Down two. And back. 12. Forward spin, 12, and then shrink again. So we're adding every single variable that we've learned here, and then repeat forever. So you see it just kind of builds upon itself. Now when I hit go, we have a completely full underwater scene. Two fish, whale, seahorse, starfish, and a scuba diver. Now these two that are shrinking will eventually get to their tiniest size and remain at the tiniest size. Okay. And that's all there is to it. So this is a really good introductory lesson to get your students comfortable with the movement codes as well as the size adjustment codes. So thanks for watching.